What happens if we take an AMR 500 supercharger, and drive it with an LS, and measure the airflow, then dramatically increase the flow rate, then make it build boost, and measure the temperature? How much power can the little AMR 500 actually support, and how much power does it take to drive? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder. I'm at West Tech Performance. Welcome to the channel. Today, it's all about this guy. I'm talking about the little AMR 500 supercharger. I get the following questions. Richard, how much power can it make? How much boost can it make? And how much power does it take to actually spin this baby up? Well, there's only one way to find out. That's for me to make my own blower dyno. That's right, you heard me right. I'm making a supercharger dyno. I've taken an LS motor. We're gonna spin this supercharger. We're gonna monitor the airflow going through the blower. We're gonna monitor the charge temperature coming out of the blower. And we're also going to monitor how much power it takes to drive the blower. That's right, the most exhaustive test ever on an AMR 500 supercharger. In order to flow test the AMR 500 supercharger, the first thing I had to do was build a bracket to mount the supercharger on the LS motor. You did a whole saw to cut this thing up. You wanna make the opening bigger than that. I also welded up a larger inlet and outlet for the AMR 500 supercharger to improve the airflow. Once I installed the tensioner with the right size belt, we were ready to test. The L33 test motor was equipped with a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam, a fast intake manifold, 102 millimeter throttle body, and long tube headers. We ran the motor as is without the supercharger to establish the power output of the motor before adding the blower. So we got our blower mounted. See the blower's mounted to our L angle. Got our discharge down here. Got our inlet up here. And pulley. See our, mount, our mounting holes down here. So now we'll run the belt. Install our tensioner. Hook up our air meter to this side. Let's see what happens. Okay, because the belt is such a tight fit, you can see it won't just go on. What we have to do is undo our bracket a little bit, let it swing down, put our belt on, and swing it back in place, put our bolt on. Tighten it up. So this will be the official first startup. Let's see what happens.
Okay, I think what we're running into is a little bit of belt slippage on this fore rib, so I've readjusted the tensioner. I've moved it over to put more tension on the belt. We'll see what happens. After testing the airflow of the AMR 500 supercharger with the factory inlet and outlet basically open, so free flowing, what I did was install a section of tubing with a restrictor on it so that we could produce boost. I then monitored the boost pressure and the charge temperature so we could see how well the AMR 500 was actually working. Okay, we've got all the baseline runs with our factory inlet and discharge. We've got boost, we've got charge temperature, we've got a lot of stuff. So now it's time to switch over to the high flow stuff and see if we can improve the airflow rate going into and out of this little AMR 500. Let's swap it over. Okay, now we're gonna take out the factory inlet and outlet and upgrade those and see if we can get more flow. I'm gonna take the inlet off, we're gonna reconfigure it for the new inlet. As you can see, we installed the new inlet into the supercharger. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than the one that we took off. The OD of this is smaller than the ID of the other one. So this should improve our airflow, but only the meter will know for certain. So we've got everything connected with the new discharge. Our idler pulley, blower in place, got the belt on. This is our new configuration. All we did was show you a photo Get rid of a short section, basically an adapter that went from this down to the smaller inlet. Let's start it up. See if we got any more airflow. testing and just running the thing just open now we're going to close it we're going to put the same restrictor that we had on the smaller inlet and outlet and find out what it does to boost we're also monitoring temperature and pressure Okay guys, now it's time to go over all the data generated when we ran the AMR 500 supercharger on the engine dyno. <laughs> now it wasn't hooked to the motor obviously, I mean, it was, we were using the motor to drive it, but it wasn't producing any boost. So we were just airflow testing it and here's what happened. First we set up the supercharger with the stock composite inlet and outlets, the small restrictive ones, and then we ran it in free flow. So it was not producing any boost. We were just processing air from one side of the blower to the other side of the blower. And you can see we had a peak airflow of 200 215 CFM, but we're going to get into something I don't think that that's totally accurate. But here's what happened when we ran it with boost, when we put our restrictive inlet on it basically to help it produce boost. We put a restrictor on it. The boost did, I mean, the airflow did drop as expected uh, to a peak of 210 CFM. And we have about a drop of 10 to 12 CFM, and this is at about five pounds of boost. So when you're running boost on it versus just free flowing, and obviously it's going to flow less air and that's something totally normal that we would have expected. The one thing that I want you to look at is the way that this airflow curve kind of lays over. I'm suspecting that that is belt slippage at the top and especially after I show you this next one. So here's what happened when we ran it with the Super Ritchie air inlet systems, you know, the bigger inlet and outlet. Here's what happened when we ran 
no boost, just free flow inlet and outlet with the new Super Richie inlet and outlets. Airflow went up dramatically as we would have expected. 267 CFM at 5,500 RPM. By the way, that's 18 or a little over 18,000 RPM on the blower speed. And it's still rising, which this should continue to do at least for a while. Maybe we could get up, let me know in the comments, could we get up near 300 CFM? But here's what happened. As a backup though, when we made another pull, the, the airflow did drop. So it dropped down to 256 CFM. So it dropped by about 10 CFM, one run to the other. This is probably from temperature in the blower, but here's what happened when we made a run while this thing was producing boost as it did before on the stock inlet and outlets, even with the bigger inlets. The airflow went down to 239 CFM, but judging again by the shape of the of the airflow curve. What do you guys think in the comments? Let me know. Is this a function of this thing just backing up, the airflow backing up because it's having to produce boost? Or are we seeing maybe some belt slippage there? The only way to find out for sure about the belt slippage thing would be basically to put a cog pulley on this. We did have a good tensioner. It didn't seem like it was slipping. We didn't see any belt dust, but let me know what you guys think. Okay, guys, this is interesting. Tell me what you guys think. Please let me know in the comments what you think and why this particular thing happened. But what we did was we measured boost pressure produced by the supercharger and the way that we got this thing to produce boost is basically I just put an inlet or a discharge restriction on it in the same way that an engine when you put a blower on it is actually a restriction because that's what boost is. It's a measurement of restriction. So all we did was we put a piece of hose with a small restrictor coming out of the blower to help it build pressure so we could find out basically I wanted to find out if it changed the airflow and the power consumption when we're building boost as, a as opposed to just processing all the air. So we put a restrictor on the outlet side of our stock inlet and outlet that came with the supercharger and ran it up to 5,500 RPM, which is 18,000 RPM. And this was the boost pressure that it produced given our restrictor that we use. So it started out about two and a half pounds, rose to a peak of 5.8 pounds, and then kind of tapered off, which I find surprising. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think that that's belt slippage or is that just a function of the airflow falling off also on this blower with this kind of boost pressure. But here's the interesting thing. When we ran the Super Richie inlet system, we know that it dramatically increased airflow quite a bit, but the boost was lower. So again, I'm asking you guys, I didn't think that this was going to happen. Given the fact that we use the same restrictor, basically, we have more airflow being processed by the blower, why is the boost pressure lower? Do we have some kind of leak on the discharge side? We just clamped a hose on there and I didn't see any leaks. We are monitoring boost pressure in the same spot. We had our temperature probe in the same spot. Let me know what you guys think. How on earth could we see less boost pressure from a system that's processing more airflow? Now let's take a look at the charge temperature offered by the supercharger. Again, we're running between five, five and a half, six pounds of boost out at the peak. And you got to see the changes in the boost curve supplied. And this is the, the charge temperature associated with those boost numbers. So again, we ran our stock inlet and outlet with the supercharger, ran it up to 5,500 RPM, which is a little over 18,000 RPM blower speed. And then we put our restrictor on it. And then we monitored the temperature using a temperature probe where we're producing boost. And so we had lower boost down low and subsequently a lower charge temperature. And then a higher temperature on the top. It started out about 123 degrees, rose to a peak of 169 degrees with the stock inlet and outlet. And here's what happened when we ran the Super Richie big inlet and outlets. I'm going to go ahead and move myself up here. You can see uh, the bottom one is the bigger inlet and outlet, more flow. The boost was lower as we saw on the boost curves. The temperature was a lot lower. We're taking a look at 102 or 103 down low here, and then about 137 out at 5,500 RPM. So significantly lower again, although the boost was lower. Again, let me know in the comments what you think. The, the bigger inlet and outlet just seemed to be better all the way around, which is not surprising given the inlet side on a positive displacement supercharger, very, very critical. 
Okay guys, the final thing we're gonna look at is the power consumption or how much power it takes to actually drive the supercharger, both producing no boost, just spinning and free flowing and processing a lot of air. And then also when we put a restrictor on it and had it produce boost. So this is the power output of our 5.3 liter. It's an L33, fast intake, big throttle body, long tube headers, a Brian Tooley uh, truck Norris camshaft. This thing produced 440 horsepower and 412 or 13 foot-pounds of torque. Now, we're not going to be spinning the blower out at 6,500 RPM, but we will, we will be able to compare it at 5,500 RPM and see how much power it took to actually drive the supercharger under these two conditions. So here is our supercharger producing no boost with the Super Ritchie inlet and outlet. Um, at 5,500 RPM, the, our test motor was making 418 horsepower. Run with the supercharger producing no boost, just processing the air, 390 horsepower. So it took 28 horsepower to drive the supercharger under these conditions. So let's take a look and see what happened when we were actually producing boost at about, this was about three or four pounds. It made, it took a little bit more power. Power output was down to 386. The biggest difference was about seven horsepower there kind of in the middle. So it took, take a, it takes a little bit more power for it to produce boost rather than just processing the air, kind of what we expected. But I'm very curious to see what Kenny Bell comes up with after we send this blower to their blower dyno and we get the thing maybe to totally eliminate any slippage, we're going to put a six root belt on it. They're going to spin it up at various RPMs and find out what the what the power consumption is and what the airflow and everything. And we'll be able to see how that data correlates to this. Okay, guys, what do you think about this Super Richie blower dyno? Pretty awesome stuff. Using the LS motor to drive our little AMR 500 supercharger. We got lots of cool data. Using our <laughs> like five or six different adapter plates, we're able to run the big air turbine and neck it down to the tiny little you know flow orifice here we have on the inlet and the outlet side of the supercharger we are able to get some good data we have airflow data we ran it open we ran it making boost we got charge temperature data we also got data on how much power it takes to drive this little supercharger but i have a surprise for you as promised at the beginning I'm gonna take this supercharger and I'm gonna mail it to Sweden where the guys from Kenny Bell are gonna put it on their official blower dyno and we're gonna find out how their data compares to the data generated on the Super Richie blower dyno. That will be a follow-up video, so make sure to tune in. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and we'll have like really cool kind of blower dyno data coming up.